broadcast live. We out there with Dash, you know? Still calling me Dash. He didn't read the, the bio. Oh, Zulu Makatini. Oh. Mkatini. Mkatini. Mm -hmm. Zulu Mkatini mm -hmm. being cutting. He's is, this, is this you being prepared? No, but this no, is this, is not, I, this is not your white bosses at Uzi. <laughs> Listen here. <laughs> you know. I left that spot too. <laughs> yeah, well, you'll be back. I'm doing ma Mzanti magic now. I mean, there's no Vuzi anyway. Well, yeah, to be honest. It's so you ain't left shit. It's, it's just like magic. you just crossed the, cross, cross, cross the other room to the other room. Yeah, still you moved the with house. the building, essentially. We still with the same house. Exactly, exactly. It's family there. Yeah, yeah. So what's happening? Oh, man, a lot. A lot has happened. It's school uniforms. Who's designing them? Myself. Mkatini Creatives, as you can see, um, Katini Creatives, which is my own imprint. So are you going to go out and sell this or is this this you, J generally? Are you going to be sponsoring kids J, um, who need like tracksuits? What is this? Is well, this a line? Where, where are we going with this? Well, to be quite honest, it was just to, you know, brand and be part of the uniform swag campaign. Mm. But uh, the response from the people has been great and people are like, no, we want it as well. So why not just produce a couple, manufacture just a few? And so a couple, man, maybe just the limited amounts. Um, we're still working the logistics and numbers behind it, but I will release a limited amount of them. Go, yeah. go. So, um, what's the vision, though? You've been always, um, you've always been entrepreneurial in your moves. What's the vision for you now? Um, the vision, man. I think um, I've been, I've been blessed to get so many opportunities to try my my creative, my creativity around these different platforms. And um, I've realized that it's something that I enjoy. I love all the avenues that I have, whether it's music, TV, fashion, and design, whatever it is, I love them, but I need to kind of somewhat either join all of them or give each one of them time, you know? And uh, I've had a good run this year. We did a crazy TV show, which did really, really great. And my whole energy was behind that. And then, well, a few nights I'd be in studio recording some music, you know, and as soon as the show wrapped, I felt it was the best time for me to just release a song, you know, and show people that we've also been in studio. That's the best way for me to answer questions when people ask, are you making music? Here's a song. Mm. What are you doing? Check the TV show, it's out, you know. Um, we know you wear a lot of um, nice clothes. Are you doing fashion? Well, we always dressed in my custom clothes, you know, so, you know, that's the best way to answer people. So you're also making ties? Mm. No, this one is actually Sastry College. Um, a friend of mine, when I was in Durban, mm. who was coming to my birthday celebration, decided to bring the tie for me. Uh, Shout out to Jermaine. So he was just like, yo, this is the high school that I went to. You know, it was quite exciting. We did a party in Durban at uh, Vakambata to launch the song, but also celebrate my birthday. It was all in one day. Mm. And we had the whole club dressed in school uniforms and different uniforms, which was quite dope. What is it, June 17th? June 14th. Uh, yeah. Close to June 16th. Oh. Yes. Dope, dope. Um, so then, obviously, everyone knows, you know, the elephant in the room, you know, you're part of Dream Team. Shout out to the boys. Um, why, where was the, why couldn't you do this and still be in the crew? Um, that's actually the best way a person has asked it, you know. Everybody's been, shout out to you, Slicker. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Even though everybody goes, Scoop should be doing the interview. Yeah. So I, I never you, said man. I'm better than Scoop. I just said I own this shit, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> That's the best way. Everybody's just like, you've left Dream Team, why did you leave Dream Team? Yeah. You know, which is like, you'll obviously get a, a, a very media trained answer straight yeah. after that, but that's the best way to ask it. Um, for the first two years, I think, when we when we moved and came up to, to Joburg, um, it was most of the things that I got into, things that I loved and wanted to do, but they were never planned specifically for that time. You know, it was just, let's move up and let's push the music. Until somewhere along the line, um, I then got into TV and then, you know, got a platform to work on my my designs with Top Man and my fashion side, which then showed me the possibilities of things to do, you know, and now the demand is there, let's go for it. You know, in between all of that, the demand grew also in these different spaces and places. 
and the dream team schedule and demand was also there. Mm. So it was it was me balancing things where I felt like I was doing great, but I'm 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 slacking because I'm 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 balancing. I'm trying to catch dream team. I'm trying to catch my fashion. I'm trying to catch TV, and I realized that sooner or later it's actually me being selfish, trying to juggle all these things, including my friends' dreams. You know, and the grown-up decision is to say. One, either you leave the things that you want to do and really focus on the dream or dream team, or you leave dream team and focus on the dreams that you have with yourself. And you know, it was a tough decision. It was a lot of back and forth talking with the boys and saying, yo, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. I think it was a, it was a long conversation, you know, I think maybe a year or some change, a year or two, where we, we spoke and, and decided, you know, after a while to go, okay, well, you, the, they even said, it's your decision to make, you know? We can't, we can't enforce you to do anything, but we don't want you to be a part of this thing if you feel like, you know, you're still juggling, you know? Either you're in it or you ain't, you know? And then after a while, I think, slowly but surely, I then grasped the idea, and I was like, this is what I need to do, you know? So, straight out of that, you know, when you do release your first song, it's not even a hip-hop song. Mm. Why? Um, you know, oh, I think, why? Okay, why? Yeah, why? Okay. Um, for me, the thing is, you know, Slicker, I've never been a rapper. I've never been a hip hop artist. I've never been a TV presenter. You know, I've never been a designer. You know, I've always been myself in all these different outlets. You know, and those different outlets have introduced me to different people and different homes. You know, there are certain people now who love me and know me for TV. And that's what they want to see me do. You know, there are certain people who know me for hip hop and rap. And that's what they want to see me do. There's a whole culture of people that also know me for dancing. And in dancing, I was never limited to crumb or, or house or banger or contemporary, which I did all of those things. Um, so for and me... Just, just, as, just to interject there. You don't even dance a lot in the video. You're making the other kids dance. I saw it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, 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 I'll explain that. Okay, we'll cool. Get Carry into on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So the whole thing about it for me was shifting even from Dash to being Zulu Mkatini. It's finally me stepping into a space where I say, I know myself, I know the things that I like, and I'm not going to let other people now determine who I am and what I should do. You know? So if you come to me slick and say, well, I want you to rap, well, my life is not just rap. You know, if you come to me and say, well, I just want you to do TV. Well, my life is just not presenting, you know. And Zulum Katini is now a person or a brand that is able to do all the things that I want to do, including a gom song if I want, a gospel song if I want, a maskandi song which I want. And that falls back to me just embracing where I grew up. I grew up in KZN. I've been doing house. We did call out, which was one of the biggest house songs to actually hit the surface of SA. You know, um, I've been dancing. I grew up in Tuzuma. My mom plays gospel. I'm from KZN. Maskandi is one of the biggest genres there. We're going to take a break quickly, just a quick. We're going to have an ad break. <laughs> so I can get my coffee? Yeah. Ad break time, so I can get Pretty this much. coffee. Pretty much, you know? Thank you, man. So, the rebranding and, and rebirth of then Zulum Kartini leading into the song that came out um, has always been that. I think for the past year or two years, it's something that I've been communicating with myself, you know, and just going, Donna, um, you can't let the masses determine who you are. You tell the masses who you are, you know. Um, I remember when I started um, TV, when I was in Dream Team, and I started TV, many people were like, what is this guy doing? Why doesn't he just stick to hip hop, you know? And then after a while, a couple of TV shows down, they're like, yo, we like him on TV. He's actually a good presenter, you know? I remember when I started switching up my dress sense and embracing my fashion side, people were like, yo, he's just a rapper. Why is he dressing up? Why is he wearing suits? And then a couple of years down the line after the GQ award, people go, well, I do think he's very, very stylish, you know? So those different experiences have also taught me to say, yo, people don't tell you who you are. You tell the people who you are. Yeah. So going back to the, the, the choice of the, the song release, you know, um, we've been working, as I said, a couple of nights and we've made some music, you know. And I went to Maporisa, I've gone to Anati, I've gone to Black Motion, I've gone to a lot of producers, you know, who are also away from what I did, which was hip hop. 
I tried different doors and different outlets to say, guys, these are the ideas that I have. This is what I'm trying to do with the music, and this is what I want to express, you know? And what these guys then said, okay, cool, let's give it a shot, you know? That song, Uniform, we went to Porty's place, we started that idea based on a conversation we were having. And I was talking to him and I was like, this is the culture in Durban. This is what the kids in Durban are doing. Kids are styling their uniform. My mom is a nurse, but nah, yeah. She styles her uniform. I think it's great to see people add their personalities to their uniform. Mm. And then he was like, dope stuff. And then we started playing some beats. And I was like, actually, let me jump on this one. Funny enough, uniform was recorded before Nile Walk. Mm. You know? People heard Nile Walk first. <laughs> you know? Mm. But anyways, so we recorded that. And I was like, I love the song. It's a dope song. I took that same song, I went to Anati. And I said, Anati, I want to make music that I can dance to, that I can perform, live elements and whatever, but not necessarily go. Mm. Then he created something else that's different, you know, and so forth and so forth. The reason why we just dropped Uniform first was because it was Youth Month. Um, it was my birthday and I was like, guys, I want to gift people with the song. I mean, I must, uh, and I think I did tell you on my message when you sent me the song and the video. I must give you uh, props for your, for your orchestration of that um, whole video, of that whole campaign um, from the summers. You know, you like just orchestrating it the way you orchestrated. That's why I even noticed that you weren't dancing on the video. I was like, this you weren't dancing much, you know. Um, you were busy with my school bag, you know. Explaining that, actually, I directed the video, right? Um, so and shout out, to Tim, yeah. shout out to Tim for, for shooting it. Yeah. Um, well, we shot and edited. That was supposed to be a promo video, mm. which was, I've got a whole um, video concept for the initial, initial video, yeah. which um, certain people out there have the luxury of knowing it, but it might never surface anymore. Because we shot it as a promo. What I wanted to do, I wanted to shoot a clip as a, a lifestyle clip with me and material culture because also I love the, 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 the drive, I love the energy, I love who they are. So I was just like, Don, this is what I want to do. This should a promo clip. Then Makoya decides to show up and he pulls up like, and when Makoya pulls up, he pulls up big. Yeah, you know, he's yeah, like, ah, yeah. Tara, yeah. we're going all the way with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the whole hood was like alive, you know. Yeah. So where to came alive. And I was going to be, this is going to be a disservice or a disjustice to the people from Soweto if we just make it a young promo clip, you know. Actually, even material culture. That's why when we sat and edited the clip with Tim, I was like, yo, these guys are not my backup dancers. These guys are not just featuring Justin Joguti, hey, what up? I went to them because I embrace what they're doing. I embrace their culture. So I'm gonna put them on as the homies, as the, they feature in the video just as much as I do, if not more just as much as Tira does, because also for them, that's their lifestyle, mm. that's their culture, you know? And for me, yes, I'm a dancer, yes, I'm, I'm part of the culture myself, but also, it's a platform for, the, like, Don called me a couple of times after the video came out, and he was like, yo, bro, yo, I've watched this video like 20 times, been watching it the whole day, we've never featured in a video like that. People always get us to Skotane, Dance, dance, maybe once, twice, then leave. Who's Don, so people know? Don Dada, he's the guy that won the Ultimate House Party. Mm. The guy with the grills, you know, uh, he's probably yeah. the lead of the material culture, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So he's the guy that I spoke to, including the time we shared on, on the- Set. On set, yeah. And I'd be like, yo, I just love your, your movement. Yeah. I love what you guys are about, you know? And I think you guys also need enough platforms to take it to the world. And if I'm just in the platform to go, my single is out, you guys jump on. That's more than enough for me. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'll get my chance to dance on the summer stage, yeah. the Oscar stage, I mean the Grammy yeah. stage, yeah. whatever stage. I'll get my chance to show yeah, you that yeah. I dance. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was beautifully done, beautifully orchestrated. Um, mm. I felt that you took your time with it. Um, that's why I said to you, it's, it's ours, but damn, I could see you put in the work. You know what I mean? It's not like you did it and you disrespected it. Mm. It's not like you did it and you said, this is the genre that people at home, it's the people that are like gonna jump in. It's not like you were jumping in mm. the bandwagon. Mm. You just simply were like, I'm gonna do it well. Mm. And that's really what came out for me. You really did well, you know? I want people to go check out a song called Champagne, mm. featuring DJ Tera, mm. produced by Porisa. 
with Dream Team and Donald came out 2013. Mm. 2013, mm. Bomb Song. Mm. I did the hook. Mm. Mm. Just after Call Out came out. Mm. 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 So for people to also maybe think that, ah, he's jumping in the bag when, no, that's what we've been doing in Durban. Mm. And a lot of people used to, I won't say mock, but would, would throw their little two cents with Dream Team when we did other genres, mm. when we did R&B mm. and gave you, girl, what's your name? Yeah, yeah. Then people are like, oh, you guys are just r and it. Yeah, yeah. Then one minute when we're rapping, they're like, yeah, this is the buzz. Then we go into a house song. Then people are like, ah, oh, these guys. So it's, it's that thing I keep saying. When you listen to people, you end up not doing what you want to do. Yeah. You know? What's the end goal? The end goal is Grammys. The end goal is to finally make and express local content and, and, and communicate local content to the world at that level, you know? That's why even when you look at my video and you watch it, you know, I've always felt, yo, my bad. I've always felt that, for example, gorm and dance music is one of our strengths mm. in SA, mm. you know? But somehow, when we package it, we don't package it on, on a global scale, mm. you know? Where when people watch it, they know exactly what our culture is, yes. you know. So apart from Gom, um, I've recorded many a songs. In fact, I could drop a project even today. <laughs> you know, that's the amount of content we have. But I will be feeding out a lot more singles to just get people to get into the, the vibrations of what I'm doing. The next song could be Kwaito, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We did quite though. So, um, so because you, you go through these transitions, we just finished the TV transition, um, you and your music transition. How long is the music transition going to be? Um, is there gonna be a, when is the next fashion transition or the next TV? Do you schedule them or do they come as when you feel? Um, I, mostly it's when I feel because that's when I express the most and the best. Mm. That's when I'm able to actually fully get into something. But I've also decided to, to try and fuse them as much as I can, you know. Um, now I've got a nice gap that I'm, I'm not recording TV, so I can fully go in and do my rollout, performances and so forth and so forth. But the fashion is now in the music, hence why material culture was also part and parcel of the video. My, my own um, products are in the video. So it's, it's, it's hard to balance, but it happens. Let me ask you a question. If you just wanted to rap, right, like because you're saying all these things you're doing but you're not talking how much work ethic does it require yeah, i mean i mean can anybody do what you're doing even if they had the good like can anyone do what you're doing i think for me anyone can do what they want to do but uh, a lot of people don't want to put the hours in. that's you what know? i'm i'm trying to say how much work are you putting in each one of your crafts it's sleepless nights mm. sleepless nights spend three days editing that video that is up on online to make sure that it comes out on the 14th. We shot it a week before. I was directing that video. There are scenes where I had to go out and look at the footage and say, guys, that's not the energy that we want. This is wrong. Guys, the dancing should be this. Then sit down with Tim for three days. His girlfriend is still pissed off at him for not seeing him for three days. Yeah. Red eyes, making sure that this, because I know how dancers should be seen in clips. That's one of the best dance clips that you'll see because people are not slow mode and are not dancing off key. Go back and watch the video and you'll see that every little beat that was there was on beat, you know? And those people, some of those moves that they did, they weren't even dancing to that original song. You know, it was a party. So sitting there, I designed these myself mm. and then I go sit and do fittings with tribal. I'm beginning to sound like Kanye West. I was in Paris, but corner the, I, office. No, 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 it doesn't matter because um, um, it doesn't matter. The context is the same. Mm. You never left Dream Team. You never stopped shooting um, the show and then you're like, let me fold my hands and the song will come and I'll come with design and shoot a video. Mm. You know, it doesn't matter, you know. Mm. Broadcast live.